Hi everyone and welcome back. It is Monday morning, December 12th, and we're gonna combine things this morning. I'm gonna do this little bit of intro and then we're gonna go into what I'm wearing today and then we'll go into the today's reading. Now, first I wanna talk about the what I am wearing videos and how they're different for a lot of women that come across mine like that. Okay, so is because my videos, they're usually on YouTube, you'll see videos, they're doing shopping sprees and it's like they're, they're it, it take you all over the place and doing makeup and things like that. Things that I don't know how to do. So my videos can be boring for a lot of people. I don't wear makeup. I don't know how to apply makeup. The eyeliner and the mascara, that would be it. I don't really know how to do hair. And the clothes that I show, they are clothing that I've had for a long time. And so it's not about shopping sprees. It's not so glitzy and glammy, which is what is customary on YouTube. Because for one thing, I'm not rich. So you wouldn't be seeing me on big, huge shopping hauls or shopping sprees. And if I was rich, I would probably shop different. I would probably still shop the way that I always have for clothing that are going to be durable. They're going to be with me for a long time. And that's usually what I'll be showing off the most and bragging about. So I feel that if the clothing are good enough for me to wear in the old, they should be good enough for you to watch like that. So let's go ahead and, and I'm 50 as of December the 8th. And I was reading the other night what changes I could expect. And they state that when people hit 50, they're least likely to change. So I guess I'll be staying the same. Let's go ahead and look at what I'm wearing and then we'll get into the reading for today. Bye. We're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. The first thing I want to talk about is what I dislike about these jeans. So I, I got these. This is a pair of Mark Jacob jeans. I had to check this morning to see how long I've actually had them. I got these December 2016 and I've worn them a lot. Those of you that have been with me for a while, you've seen me wear these. This pair of jeans. A lot. One of my go-to pair of jeans. I like them. I like the fit. I like the cut of these jeans. I like them because they are have a like a more of a trouser jean design as opposed to a a regular jean design and fit for me specifically. What I don't like about them, especially this morning, is the way that they're flaring out at the bottom, at the ankle when they like go in that direction and it is like a square. I don't like that about it. I don't know what's up with that like that. So that's what I don't like. I'm pairing it with these Muse. This is a pair of Prada Muse. It, I got these last year in March, March 2021. They're open told Muse. They are they have a floral cloth design on top, it purple and black. I haven't worn these a lot. I wore them over the summer last year with a pair of white shorts and that are actually my favorite shorts. And that's what I would usually pair these with, but maybe, maybe four or five times I wore them over the summer. I like them, but I'm not crazy about them. That's why I haven't worn them that much, but I decided to put them on today and I'm gonna most definitely put them out because of the color pattern that's a purple and a black. I'll most definitely try to put them out more when we go from spring and going into the summer. Now I have this shirt. I have had this shirt since 2018. It's a very, very collared shirt. It is a peach and cream stripe design. I love this shirt. I like it. I would wear this shirt a lot with a pair of tan pants, cream pants, a pair of tan pants that I had, a pair of cream pants that I had that I donated this past November of 2022. So, and I, but I decided to put this on and this is the first time that I feel that I paired this shirt with jeans of any type but I, I like the shirt so i kept it and didn't donate it but i don't know what i'm gonna pair it with i donated the pants that I'm, i usually wear it with also i will wear this shirt a lot in the summertime throughout the years that i've had it i've worn it a lot like that then i will wear it with a pair of khaki shorts long like khaki more of a shorts. Those of you that have watched me, you've seen those same khaki shorts. They're in the same style of the white shorts that have a zipper on the side like that. A pair with a, a pair of khaki shorts or a khaki, a pair of brown shorts. So I would wear this this shirt the um, summer, winter, spring, and fall like that. 
Okay everyone, that's what I am wearing today. We're gonna go ahead and get started with the reading. Now, with the reading, you somebody is a Cancer Sun sign and you sent your donation through Cash App, you need to send me your North Node. I need your I need your North Node or I need your South Node in order to do the Akashic reading. So we're gonna move. So send that in and then just um you can send it to the to the email actually and then I'll do yours tomorrow. So we're gonna go ahead and do this cancer who has uh, uh, something similar to a stellium. You are a cancer sign and your Venus is in cancer. Your rising is, is also in cancer. Okay, and you have a moon in Taurus. Your north node is in Scorpio. So your south node is in Taurus where your moon is. Your Scorpio north node is in the fifth house of Leo. Two fit signs, one water, one fire. And your Saturn is in Leo in the second house of Taurus where your moon and your south node are. Okay, so when I saw that this morning, I, I immediately thought that you're going to have to release something in order to gain something. So you're, you could be dealing with a lot of having to let things go and then see where the energies take you. Your south node is in Taurus. So Taurus does, it's a fit sign just like Scorpio, but Taurus can be stubborn. Taurus is a bull. It can be stubborn. You bring in the lower karmic energy of Taurus. What you need to release in this incarnation to align yourself fully or as much as you can with that north node destiny, which is Scorpio. So it would be, and remember Taurus is earth, Scorpio is water. So it's like you, your incarnation, it would get to that point where it feels that the ground, the foundation is the second house is Taurus. So it could be about money. And then your moon is Taurus. That's your GPS. Taurus is the second house, the comforts of life. It's, my moon is in Capricorn. It's about, it's an earth sign also, but it's the stability and security in life in the third dimension state, feeling secure, feeling stable, like that, regarding the resources. Yours is Taurus, the other sister sign, but Taurus is about, is, is money, is the second house. Taurus is the stuff. Okay, because Taurus is what is mine, but it's the actual stuff. Okay. It could be the actual money, but it also would be the stuff. Taurus out of the three earth signs is the more, the, is the nine of pentacles. Is the, like Capricorn Moon is the, the security that the money can bring, or feeling secure, and you're feeling secure on the inside. Our moon is us internally, how we feel nurtured, how we nurture others. Capricorn Moon, like mine, is the safety and security of resources, the safety and security that you can bring. Yours with the moon in Taurus and your south node in Taurus, south node in Taurus, but Taurus can be selfish, and we bring the lower energy. Um, south node in Taurus could be greedy. It could be because it's about this stuff. Like that, South Node and Taurus, the low vibration could be the person that is becomes a hoarder of things. Like you have too much stuff, it's just hoarding the stuff. It could be a hoarder of money, South Node and Taurus. Now, so you were that in, in past lifetimes, you're bringing in the karmic energy which you're releasing. It could be a hoarder of stuff, it's what is mine, it's the actual, it's the materialism, because the second house is Taurus, then that's the nine of pentacles, it's the materialism. Okay, but it's selfishness. Like, it'll be this is my this, this is my that, this is my that. Now, you see, where and your moon is in Taurus. Now, Capricorn moon, like mine, is the ancestral lineage, and this is mine, but I'm going to pass it on to my children. I'm accumulating this, I'm going to pass it on to my descendants. Okay, like that. Virgo moon it would be like the other sister sign. Virgo moon would be the worker and instilling a work ethic it would be about um and passing that on to their children it would be about and then their children being proud of what that work ethic bought in, in virgo is their stuff also but it's also incorporated with capricorn of passing it on to their descendants now you're and that's why you would be with your moon in tars if you had that moon in tars without the south the south node being in tars so i know the low vibrational energy of tars Okay, it will be your moon in Taurus. You will be like, 
enjoying the finer things of life in Taurus, especially with the moon sign, enjoying the luxuries of life is the Nine of Pentacles. And the luxuries of life is, is what the money can buy is Taurus, okay? And the stuff is Taurus, okay? That you can touch, because Taurus is what they can touch, taste, see, smell, and feel. And, but enjoying it for their own need. And the South Lone Taurus would be for selfish needs. It would just be about them. Because Taurus is what is mine. Like that. It's not like Capricorn Moon. It's mine and I'm enjoying it. But it's for my ancestors. Then they're passing on to them and all of that. Virgo will be, I work for it. I'm the worker. And I'm going to teach my children a good work ethic. I'm going to represent myself as a good work ethic. And then they get what is mine after I'm done. It's like That's how the earth signs work with the moons. Now, is where... And then there's sun sign incorporated with that, and their their north and south node determines how they get it done, what they go through on the path as it relates to releasing, or in order for it to happen. Your south node in Taurus means that it, in this lifetime you could be releasing materialism, you could be releasing um, or or having a struggle with materialism, but materialism may be in a selfish way. Maybe not wanting to share will be Taurus at the South Node. Selfish, not wanting to share. Um, hoarding things that are unnecessary where the things go to waste and they're not used is Taurus. It's okay to be materialism of having stuff if you're using it. It's like it would be where um, it would be Taurus at the South Node would be just hoarding stuff because it's theirs and it's not used. Cobbs will start to get on it. They start to have all types of stuff. And it's just accumulating more stuff and nothing is usable. Nothing is of value to leave to anybody. It's just a bunch of stuff. That's South Node Taurus. So be careful of that because that's what you would have been in past lives. Okay. Because you have the Taurus on the moon and the, the South Node. Now, it would be where and you have your North Node, the Scorpio, in the fifth house of Leo. Fifth house of Leo is children. But Scorpio is other people's money. So you could be, there could be issues with an inheritance, money that you're to leave or that's supposed to be left with you. If there's money issues with an inheritance, you have siblings, it could be an issue of maybe you're not getting your fair share, not getting what you feel should be your fair share like that. Or maybe having to getting it, but it's going to be divided. It'll be fair. Your South Node in charge where you will feel that everything should be yours. So in this lifetime, you would have been that way. So in past lives, excuse me, you would have been that way. But in this lifetime, things are going to be made fair regarding finance and resources. If they haven't been fair, it could be in life in general with your siblings, with your own children, if you have them or you as a child. It doesn't matter. But the scales are going to be balanced as it relates to fairness. And you're going to be incorporated into that fairness. And you need to make sure that you only have things around you that are things that are usable and of, of value. But not a lot of it. And that when you're getting something new, you're always donating also. Like, I always have, uh, 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 like, every November, I've talked for years on the podcast and in the videos how I donate clothing and things like that. I usually don't have a lot of items because I get overwhelmed with a lot of stuff. Okay, so is make sure you're donating every year things that you're not using anymore. And only holding on to the things that are usable that you're actually using. Like that, don't try to be an accumulator of things. Streamline your life. You need to make sure that you're donating things and streamlining with that South Node being in Taurus. Because the South Node, Taurus is the materialism, because Taurus is the material items. It's the Nine of Pentacles. Having only what is usable, like that. Okay. And start thinking financially beyond you. Because your North Node is Scorpio, that's other people's money. It could be about similar to the legacy that you will leave. Okay, somebody inheriting your money like that. Also, you inheriting money. It's like that and then that continuum. Like that, teaching that Taurus, the South Node, something new and something different. Now, something else should have been yours. And I feel that you were cheated out of it. Oh, you've gone through experience of being cheated out of things that should have been yours. Anything with, with family or siblings is going to be resolved. There's going to be a resolution that comes in, Saturn and Leo in the second house. Okay. 
Saturn and Leo in the second house will be about your acknowledgement or being acknowledged. There's a lesson there about acknowledgement. It could be within the family, within the friends, within the work, within society, within the romance, whatever. But there's been a lesson there. So there's going to be a restoration. I feel that you could be in the middle of the lesson or releasing the lesson or complete the lesson. So there's going to be a shift and a change. Whatever has been cheated or withheld from you. Okay, you're going to receive it. You're going to go into energy of receiving it. And there could be like a little bit of um, dharma. You can have good karma that's coming in to you to help resolve any issues or stagnancy or entanglements that you're in that were fully out of your control. Where if you would have been allowed to apply yourself and do this and that, these whatever would have happened is, has happened would not have happened. OK, that energy could be what you're about. You're releasing now and you're going into being um, that dharma, that good karma, resolving those issues and, and, and disentangling those knots. That's what you're, you have here. So. And how you give her yourself time, energy, effort. Is very important. Don't overgive, don't undergive. Make sure you're you're applying as much balance in your life as you can. You're in charge of that. You had the lesson that has taught it to you, but remain open. Okay, you will be the carrier of imbalances in romantic relationships, in work, in partnerships, whatever. You will be the carrier of the imbalance like that. Either you're the one that don't give enough, you're the one with the Taurus South Node is stingy with oneself, time, energy, effort, resources. Or and you've done that, or you carry the energy and you attract people that have done it to you like that. Okay. It would be, in either case, you would have been on both ends of the spectrum unless you're a new soul and this is your first rodeo. So, you, but, but you're going into energy. I feel that you've been already dealt with the energy. You're going into energy of where things are going to, a good, a lot of good karma accumulated is going to come in. The time, energy, effort, which you have given out, it was not in vain. The universe will most definitely apply it to your release of a path and your alignment with a new one. Okay. Let's see. Show me. You should be approaching some type of door of direction regarding direction. You had a two of wands. That's a door and a path being closed. Don't keep knocking on doors and paths that are closed. Don't do that. This is the, the, it's like it's a cold. Use the two of wands is open. You completed something. You're done with it. Don't try to go backwards because it's going to bring you the same thing. The universe could be ushering you into the new or will start to usher you into the new and it's going to be into the unknown. And you would tr truly have to have faith. It'll be destined. You're going into a, an energy of destiny, a direction of destiny. The seven of cups, the Lord of illusionary success. Okay. Those doors are closed. Oh, trying to open doors where you fantasize about this being the outcome. It could be romantic, non-romantic. You fantasize. This is Scorpio. The seven of cups, a lot of fantasizing about a path and the possibilities of the path, romantically, non-romantically. And that is going to be like this illusion, delusion. Okay, the door is closed and it's going to stay closed. And you can wait for it to open. It's still going to be closed. You can put a lot of energy and effort and time into the opening. It's still going to be closed. It's not a part of your destiny. Something isn't. Oh, it's completed. It's cycling your life. You have a new path. That's going to present itself to you. We have the lovers. Decisions. And we have a foolish man. Now. There appears to be a romantic partner here. Past life manifested into this lifetime. There could be a door closed with him or there's a door closed with one and a new man is coming.
he may have been trying to open a door of his past or you've been trying to open a door to him that is over and somebody else is going to come in. It's like a, a path is walked and a new door is here. Okay. The seven of cups is fantasizing. Okay. That something is going to be different. That something is going to change. That a door that is locked is going to open. If you wait and give it time and think positive about it, it's not. So you completed a cycle with a soulmate. You completed it. And no matter how much you wait or try to go backwards, it's going to remain the same. Because somebody else is going to come into your life. If, if somebody come towards you romantically specifically and they're offering you the same old past or they're offering you, offering you a repetition of the past don't, and you're tempted to walk that path, don't do it. And you will only do it out of fear or desperation or seven of cups, confusion, illusion, delusion. Wishful thinking. Okay. You, you completed past cycles with a romantic partner. You have somebody new coming in romantically. You had a son and the five of pentacles. Five of pentacles and the son. There's a shift. If there's been any financial troubles or lack, there's an energy of lack mentality or something missing. Or it could be health issues in combination with the sun. If the sun is the most positive card, you get the debt. This expansion, this illumination, this is prosperity, this is abundance, this is contentment. Don't be tempted to walk down a path that you already dealt with romantically like that. Wait. Something good is coming. Okay. Wait. Something good is coming and it's going to present itself to you and it'll present itself to you as the sign. As the sign. Even with your job and your work. Wait. Wait. A door is closed. You complete it. Maybe something with work too. Okay. Something is going to be presented to you. Okay. And it's the sign. And it clears out whatever was missing on this path that you completed. It clears it out. It completes it. You've learned a lesson here. That's your reading. Bye.